One of the problems about Iran is that it's very difficult to uh, to do any kind of serious diplomatic business with them. When we saw um, in recent times how they've used um, the taking of st well the state hostaging of of people with dual nationality um, with um, uh, um, Mrs. Radcliffe, um, uh, we, we've we've seen the way in which the Iran state works. Um, we've been camp I've been campaigning with um, the Institute of Human Rights for the International Bar Association on what they do to lawyers who act for people who uh, the state suddenly um, comes down on because so often the lawyers also end up in jail. Um, Nazreen uh, Sotude, a great lawyer who's taken up the issues of women and women's inequality and the treatment of women, is in herself has been jailed repeatedly and uh, and uh, has suffered incredibly an Evian prison. So uh, this is a regular thing with Iran. and uh, And one of the problems is and one of the, the shocking things about Akbari is that, you know, a death penalty takes place without any opportunity for appealing, without any due process. We had nobody had access to the courts and to see the evidence that they were putting forward to claim, make this claim that he is uh, he was spying. But it's about messaging. This is about Iran sending out messages to their own populace, of course, that um, that the death penalty will follow from activities that they don't like or that they will use um, individuals um, to send messages to, to their general public and to the world. And so um, we just have to be very, very rigorous. I would like to see uh, the Foreign Office um, and our Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister um, really doing something about the presence of, for example, the current ambassador. There should be something done. You know, what happens when we say there's been a, a call for, the, for the, you know, an ambassador to come in? They don't. They, 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 it, it used to be a ritual, but they don't go in. And I mean, there has to be some way of much more directly challenging what's going on. And with Iran, we like to imagine that we, under the radar, our, our, our diplomats are having conversations. Well, whatever the conversations are, they're not working. Mm. And so I, I think that we have to be much firmer in the way in which we respond. Is the idea, you say they're about the kind of ritual of calling in an ambassador, is the idea of diplomacy uh, outdated? It's not actually kept up with the modern challenges that we face? Well, it, it works in some in, with some countries, but there are some countries which are essentially totalitarian. I mean, where they, where they really the rules even of diplomacy are not working, mm. and uh, and so I think we have to be realistic. I remember um, uh, years ago when when um, when Nazrin uh, um, uh, uh, Radcliffe was was first taken into custody, I um, her husband approached me and I contacted the Foreign Office. I had I had a meeting with. Um, uh, two of the people from the Iran desk who were very deeply involved and they said to me please do not go public because we've got this in hand we are sorting this out below the radar and I'm afraid it's only when you go public and you really expose what goes on that um, anything really happens and so I think that we've got to be seen to be very fierce in our response to this kind of co conduct there's no rule of law in Iran we have to be very clear about it and the and the law is dictated on political terms, day in, day out, for the needs of the theocratic state. Mm. In terms then of, of the response, I, I was seeing earlier some suggestions, again, it's along those kind of d diplomacy lines, really, in, in terms of what action can actually be taken, whether it's calling people in, whether it's, um, uh, you know, not recognising, here's here's the example from Alicia uh, Cairns of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the UK could expel the Iranian charged affair, recall our ambassador from Tehran and prescribe the Revolutionary Guard. None of that screams to me, Baroness Kennedy, that it will stop executions in the future. It, it doesn't. And, and, but in many ways, you know, what we have to recognise is that symbolism, even coming from us, if Western uh, democracies respond in a, in a, as, as though they're really taking this seriously, that has meaning to the populace in, in Iran. Now, there's a moment in time here. It, the, the, it's quite clear that the demonstrations which are taking place have spread. It's not just young women who want to, you know, have, have, have freedom and uh, much more uh, equality. It's also their families who are seeing the ways in which they're being treated and it's also many of the other organizations if you speak to the for example the professional classes in iran they really do not like living in a, in a mm. theocratic state the support comes from the army and it comes from the rural areas where people have not um, been exposed to opportunities of equality and so forth so it really is about um are having to 
um, engage more with the people who will be able to lead an effective, um, uh, an effective change. Now, but part of this, going after um, uh, uh, Barry, is partly to um, as a message to all of us, to the outside world. You know, if anybody has dual nationality or anybody um, seems to be uh, pr promoting anything that they see as being Western, they will be punished too. So, I mean, I'm afraid that there is a... There, there are serious issues here about how we speak about the values that are our values, which is about um, freedom, about uh, the ways in which um, decisions can only be made um, uh, um, after proper processes and open justice, that you do not have um, uh, uh, people being executed without having the right of appeal and so on. Yeah. I mean, and this has been happening. We saw it happening with a number of young men who were connected to the protests. So I do think that um, we, we're, we're pretty tepid on these things. I've got it just now with um, um, in relation to a man called Jimmy Lai. Um, uh, Jimmy Lai it was a, is a publisher. He's a British citizen in Hong Kong, and he has been thrown in jail, and the Chinese government have gone after him because he was running a media organization, a very successful businessman running a media organization, which was pro-democracy. So they've gone after him. And the message in that is, is basically to have a chilling effect on the middle class, the professionals in Hong Kong who are still managing, trying to deceive themselves into thinking that we'll go back. It's somehow, the, the, you know, we'll, we'll, it will be business as usual now that the, the students have stopped protesting. I'm afraid it isn't business as usual. And there is a, a, has been a pendulum swing mm. to walk back towards authoritarianism in our world. And we've got to call it out because the values of the West do matter.